Why hello there! Today in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with the Infragistics NetAdvantage ASP.NET web schedule controls. And I'm going to actually use this example here with our SQL data provider and SQL server for the database backend. So once you're done watching this video you should have all the basic steps needed to get up and running with a basic web schedule application including the database backend, the data components that go on your web form, as well as the UI components that all get tied together to have a very simple scheduling type of app. So to get started, one of the things that I wanted to show you is that I have a SQL Server Developer Edition running on my machine with a Web Schedule 2 database, and here are the various tables. And if you don't have this, of course, you're going to have to build it. The way we do that is to use the SQL script that Infragistics gives you. So I'm going to fire up Windows Explorer, and what I'm going to do is navigate into, um, let's see, my documents here, or, or users, public, public documents, Infragistics, NetAdvantage, ASP.NET, web schedule, and data. So if you can remember that path, it's right here. So it's users, public, public documents, Infragistics, NetAdvantage, whatever the volume is, ASP.NET, web schedule, data. And in here, you will find the web schedule 2.sql script. So if you have a version of SQL Server installed, um, and if you also have uh, management, the uh, management studio installed as well. You can double click on this, it'll open up, and then you could basically select the entire script or just click on the execute button and it'll run, create all of the objects, schema, and all that stuff for you, and you're good to go. So that's done. Another thing I wanted to show you is that if you have IIS installed at the time that the NetAdvantage ASP.NET installer is run, what it will do is this. So let me collapse this guy and go to my INET pub, triple W root, ASP.NET client, infragistics, and let's go to this one right here, or let's say CLR4, I'm going to work with CLR4. You're going to have style directory, which is basically all of the um, different types of you know, style files that are in there, like that, you know, that are applied to various you know, infragistics controls, scripts directory, which has all the JavaScript stuff that our controls rely on. And the web schedule stuff is what I'm looking for. So the forms directory has web schedule ASP.NET project. And this is an entire project in itself that represents all of those pop-up dialogue forms that you get, like the appointment confirmation, the reminder, the recurrence dialogue, and all those guys. It's all dumped in here and it's already set up as a web application. Now one thing that I wanted to say, I mean it's good that I mentioned this, but when I installed this and I tried to make an application and run it, I got an error message of something along the lines of some of the web.config settings are not correct. So what I did was I went in here and I essentially removed some of the sections. So towards the bottom there were several sections like down here that um, were related to um, some, some properties that are not really set in the parent and it complained about it. So that's basically what I did. So here's a backup of that. So if I were to edit this in Notepad++, it was essentially these guys, like all these, like the security stuff and all these guys here. So again, that's what I removed on mine because it's in, because this is a second web con, web.config that's in this child application and it's basically being referred by the other application that I'm going to build. So it kind of inherits those settings. So that's why, you know, that contradicted the parent settings. So I blew this away and it works just in case if it happens to you. So now you're all under, you're all understanding this part up to this part, right? So let's now continue forward. Here's my web schedule stuff. Um, one of the things that I would like to recommend is that if you wanted to add more resources, you could definitely create an application in your ASP.NET app. But let's say if um, let's say if I wanted to just grab yeah you know, this here, you notice that Infragistics inserts the unassigned resource or the unassigned user. So if you wanted to, you can just you know throw a bunch of users in here by using um, you know the Management Studio, or if you want to you know hook it up to a grid or one or whatever you want and allow your users to add users, you know, something like that, or whatever you want, but just know that this is the table where you have all the end users. So if I wanted to add another one, like resource name, Tom P, um, email address, you know, whatever my email address is, and then it'll create um, another ID number. So you could do that. That'll give you the ability to have resources slash users for your web schedule. Alright, with me so far, let's just uh, collapse this guy here, close this down. So now what I'm going to do is, now that you understand the foundation of the things that must be in place before you build your web schedule app, let's 
get to building the app. So I'm going to do file, new, let's do website, and I'm going to do one that works with HTTP, and let's call this uh, schedule site, and it's going to be just a plain old empty ASP.NET website. And again, I'm going to keep this very minimalistic. You guys could add your styling, your um, you know your other fancy stuff, you know, layout, layout the UI however you like, and all that stuff. But again, I'm just giving you the bare bare bones here, so you understand and focus on what you need to do to get this up and running. All right, so first thing I want to do, let's just add a plain old web page here. So just call it default.aspx. We're good to go. And a couple of things that we need to get started. So I'm going to scroll down to my NetAdvantage ASP.NET toolbox. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to find the web schedule info right here, web schedule info. That's basically a component that ties together the data access layer with all of the other UI components. All right, this is the web schedule info is where you go to switch the context of the current resource or user and that's what you do here. You could do it programmatically um, you know, you could do it, I believe you could do it declaratively too if I'm not mistaken. The next thing that I need to throw in here, let me just add a little enter there. I'm going to go to the data components real quick and what I'm going to do is because I'm using SQL Server I'm going to need a, some kind of SQL connection. So guess what? SQL data source. That's what I'm going to throw on the form here. So I'm going to use that one here. So let's go into the design view and configure the SQL data source. So I will click on it and configure data source. Now it's going to be a little weird, so what I'll do is new connection, my local server, and let's see, I'm going to select the web schedule 2. And what I'll do is I'm going to actually use SQL Server authentication because I just, you know, just do it that way. Again, the way I'm doing it is not really the most secure, but again, you could use either Windows authentication or whatever. But just for this example, to make it quick and easy, I'll do that. Test connection and it works. Then we click OK. Then next. Now here's what I'm going to. One little thing I want to explain to you. I'm going to um, I'm going to specify a SQL statement because I don't want to return any records. The uh, web schedule info is going to just use the connection portion of the SQL data source. So you don't want to really specify a SQL statement that pulls back records. So I'll do something like let's see. Let me just do this first and just test the query back up. Uh, let me just do this one here. Just query builder. Just select this. Select activity ID from activity where 1 equals 2. Ever do this trick back in the good old days when you want to basically create a schema based on a SQL statement but guarantee to never return rows? Well, that's what I'm doing. It's a little old school trick. And uh, that's basically you know what you can do to do that. And that will definitely return no rows and just the minimum column. So the minimum, bare minimum needed to just hook up to the database without causing any performance issues in the back end, right? Okay, the next thing that we need to add now is, so we have the SQL data source, which basically is our connection to the database. We have web schedule info, which is essentially the collection of scheduling type of objects that are manipulated and synchronized between the UI components. Now we need a data provider, the Infogistics data provider that fetches data from the SQL database. So what we're going to do is jump back to the NetAdvantage toolbox and we're going to look for the web schedule SQL client provider. So that's what we're looking for. We'll dump it right in here. And then this is what we... So we basically got to wire all these guys together, right? So if we click on this one here, let's look at some of the properties. The data source ID for the web schedule SQL client provider must be set to the SQL data source. That's where it's going to get its connection. That's what we do there. So let's see if we click on the smart tag. So it's kind of a mix. You could set all the properties here, but notice in the smart tag, you could hook it up to the web schedule info, but it, it should it would be nice if you could hook it up to this and that at the same time. Basically, this is like the bridge in between both of those. So And that's kind of why I put it in the middle. So we have the web schedule info. We have the actual database connection slash data access layer. Then you have this guy in between that ties them both together. So this guy knows how to fetch data from a SQL connection, flip through the records, and then provide the business objects to this guy right here. So that's kind of how it works. So let's hook it up.
So now I just bridged both of them between each other with using web schedule client provider. All right, that takes care of the actual back end stuff that we need. Now let's start throwing a bunch of front end stuff on here. So if I just just go to the source view and let's say if I go to the top here and just and again I'm not going to create any like layout elements or tables or you know divs and positioning and all that stuff. I'm just going to slap them on the form to get it up and running. First control that we're going to throw in here is the web calendar view. All right? Press enter. The next one I want to throw down here is the web day view. That's the next one. Press enter. Web month view is the next one here on the list. So we'll do that. Press enter. And last but not least, we will hit the web week view. So I mean, you could add them and put them, lay them out however you like. It doesn't matter. I'm just again throwing them on the form. Now back to design mode, right? Let's take a look at these guys. All right, so I got them all thrown on the form. Let me just make a little bit of room here so you could see everything what's going on. So this control here, the web calendar view, is typically used for navigation. You could still navigate with the other controls, but this allows you to jump around through months and years very easily. And the typical control used for navigation. Then we have a day's worth of data, a month's worth of data, and a week's worth of data all here. Now, the next step that we need to, to take here to hook everything up is click on the control and hook it up to the web schedule info. Done. Do that to the next control. Web schedule info gets hooked up to this one. And you just got to do it to every one. So now you see how it all fits together. We basically have the actual database or data access component, which is a SQL, the SQL um, client itself. And then what you need to do is hook up the web schedule info to the web schedule SQL client provider. And then you have to hook up the SQL data source to the web schedule. SQL client provider. If you could say that real quick five times without stuttering, you're great. So this one's hooked up. Okay, so they're all hooked up. That's basically what you need to do, is just to tie them all together. Now we're going to save it and uh, let's pray to the demo gods that this works and run it. Let's see what happens. So everything loads up. Oh, and guess what? It looks like I had an appointment in that database from a previous example that I was playing with. So that's pretty cool. So let me, let's go here real quick. Let me um, fire up my SQL server real quick just to take a look in here. So my management studio fires up and we're going to hook up and log in. And we're going to go to the databases, web schedule 2. And let's go to tables and the activity table. So let's grab these guys here. Yep, there's one in there. Let's, I believe I could just let's just blow it away. Actually, sorry. Let's do this. And I just blew it away, so we're done. Let's close it out. Okay, so let's just refresh the page. There should not be anything else in here. All right, yep, so here we go. Let's do this first. First step, are we synchronized? I'm going to click on this, and everything on the page should move. See how everything on the page is being moved around? I could even do this, and everything else on the page should move around, too. So click that. Click that. Now, let's, let's do something else. I'm going to stop this real quick. Let's, let's go here one second. And let's go down to the... Web schedule info. Let's set properties on this. What can we do here? The one I was looking for is enable smart callbacks. Let's set it to true. You know what that means? You could think of the, just imagine the name of this property was enable Ajax. That's what that means. So that's what that does when you set it to true. So now let's run it. And now when I click around, everything is being done through an Ajax callback. So remember before I was getting my little post backs, you know, full page post back. So now if I go down here, I could jump around the calendar dates and everything will refresh on the page. Notice how this calendar is refreshing. The calendars up here are refreshing as well when I jump around. So again, it's all synchronized because you know the uh, all those components are tied together. All right, good. We're good with the synchronization. Now, next test. Let me double click this guy right here. Do we get a form? Yes, we do. And remember what I said earlier, I had problems with the web.config. If that ever happens to you, um, yeah, it's no problem. That's that. I mean, just blow away those config settings. It's just that 
the web that, that form the uh, forms directory, the web schedule forms directory, that web application that I showed you, it must be accessible through HTTP. It should be an actual running web application that can be accessible. If you look at the documentation for web schedule and there's a section called deploying web schedule, there's two topics that I actually wrote a long time ago that show you how to take all those forms and incorporate them as actual assets of your existing web application. So if you don't want to have just one web form application that represents all these dialogues that I'm showing you here, you could also dump them, like you can make a copy of those and just dump them local to each one of your web schedule powered apps. You can do that too. That gives you flexibility of having like all the forms local to the app. So you can do it that way too. So let's just play with this here. Actually, let's do something more fun. So Tom's house, everyone's invited. And let's see, it will be like an all-day event. And okay, so we do that. We save the appointment. Now let's see what happens. So I have this going on here. It's an all-day event. Notice how it shows up in my day view and let's scroll down a little bit you'll notice how it got added here and let's see we should also see it here it got added there so we could double click on it here and it fires up the same exact form and you know what I want to do it's like this is so exciting that what I want to do is let's um I want to set let's see what else could we do I want, to, I want to basically make this like last you know a couple of, like a little bit longer than just that so I want to make it last to here and we do that and then it should be repeated all across it. Now notice how it's cool how Infragistics renders it in such a way where it just goes through all this here and it, and it you know goes through all of the days so that's and even shows up here as bold that all these days are parties it's like all day with party starts at 9 on the, on the 9th rather it ends on the 16th so actually it starts you're already late to it if you look at the date on my computer here right now so better get going because you know I don't want people to be late but then again, I just wanted you to know that you now have the ability to quickly come up with a web schedule application using the SQL database that I showed you. And again, you get the script that contains all the stored procedures. Because what happens is the, the SQL data, the SQL clients, the um, let me see, the web schedule SQL client provider. I always have trouble remembering that full name. This component makes specific calls to the actual stored procedures that are built and optimized within the web schedule database that that we built here at Infogistics and provided to you guys out there to our customers so that's what that's important because it's like all optimized and it hooks directly up and it just uses this connection to go access your particular SQL Server database so now that you know and understand the basics of how this works the same thing or similar thing could be done with our access data provider too because see if I go here we have I mean if you use an access data source from Microsoft to connect to that Microsoft Access version of this web schedule database in that same data directory that I showed you at the very beginning you can get the Access data source and then you can replace the SQL you could, you could place this with the Access data source replace this with the web schedule OADB provider you could use that to hook up with that one and we also have a web schedule generic data provider which totally allows you to get your business objects or data from anywhere it could be anything any kind of data model that you want but then you have to write code to like map your business object properties directly to the the properties of the objects that we require so this is like a more generic open provider that requires you to write some code to fetch data from just about anywhere from an existing data backend that you might have so now that you've seen how all this works I hope you enjoy this video and make use of this wonderful set of tools in your application Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.